Hi, my name's Rick, and I'm so glad that you joined us today. Did you know that the way you look at those people that are against you can change the outcome in your life? It can. I'd like to show you how in just a moment, but before I do, I wanna let you know that if you hit the like and subscribe button, you'll be helping us to reach people all around the world. And if you're a partner with us by donating, you can do that through three safe and secure ways here on the screen. Now, what I want you to do is sit back, relax, and watch this video, and I'll be right back. Today, I want to talk to you about a blessed heart. You know, when you look at Facebook and Twitter, it shows how many people today feel hashtag blessed. But what I've noticed, and maybe you have too, is that people can say they're blessed, but it's a way of boasting while trying to sound humble. Like this one. It says, I, I still can't believe that I have my PhD at 25, hashtag blessed. Or what about this one? This is going to be so hard to quit my job when I made six figures in two days, hashtag blessed. Or this one made me sick. You can't imagine what a bore it is having to go to the Caribbean again. Now that the villa is paid off, it would be criminal not to go on holiday there, but it's got to get, it's getting old. You're so lucky not to have a second house. It's nothing but a headache, hashtag blessed. See, we all know that God wants to bless us, but we tend to think that a blessed life is equivalent to a successful life or a good life. For example, like a loving marriage, obedient children, a vibrant ministry, a healthy body, a successful career, trusted friends, financial abundance. But what I want us to look at is how a blessing can come through even our enemies, and that on the surface, it might not look like a blessing, but in reality, God is using it to promote you, lift you up, and help you reach your full potential. See, we've been looking at David's life because, let's face it, he was unique. He was the only person in the entire scriptures that God said, David, your heart is like mine. God saw something in David's early life when he was a shepherd boy that if we can follow, can help us to have a heart like God as well. David understood something about blessings that many people miss. He would have only been known as a shepherd boy if it weren't for Goliath. See, Goliath was strategically placed in David's path, not to defeat him, but to promote him. See, without Goliath, David would have never taken the throne. See, the first thing to write down if you're writing these three down is this. If you want to have a blessed heart, then don't complain about your enemies. You, you may think that they are preventing you from reaching your goal, or in David's case, your throne, but really God is using your enemy to get you to where he wants you to be. After this victory, David was probably thinking, okay, Goliath has passed me, it's easy sailing now. But then he had to face the jealousy of King Saul. And the more popular David got, the angrier Saul became. See, God could have used King Saul to promote David. Saul had the authority. God could have impressed upon Saul's heart to promote David. But God chose to bless David, not through his friends, but through his enemies. That's why we don't have to try to impress people or try to convince them to like us or think, well, hopefully they're going to you know, give me a good break. No, God doesn't have to use your friends. He can use your enemies your critics, the, the ones that are trying to push you down, he can use them to push you up. See, when David defeated Goliath, you never hear any more about Goliath. Goliath was created for David's purpose. Part of God's plan for David was to establish who David was, to build his credibility. Just as God has divine connections lined up for you, people to encourage you, push you forward, he's also lined up people that will try to stop you, discourage you, try to make you look bad. There are Goliaths ordained to come across your path, and if you don't understand this principle, then you're going to get discouraged. God, why is this happening to me? 
That opposition wasn't meant to stop you. It was meant to establish you. And when you overcome it, you will not only step into a new level of your life, but everyone around you will see the favor of God is on your life. See, the second thing to write down if you want, but definitely capture, is that if you want to have a blessed heart, then you got to be like David, which is don't give up. See, when your enemy is bigger, stronger, louder than you, it's easy to get intimidated, but the blessing comes when you don't give up. Here's what I'm talking about. Watch this video clip. Every time you get hit, it feels like I'm getting hit. He's old. He's arthritic. I'm sorry, Jimmy. It's over. Go home to me and the kids, Jim. Go home with what? Go home with what? They said I'm through, mate. There can't be a boxer no more. You know, to keep cutting shifts down at the docks, and you just don't get picked every day. That's it! Well, we ain't got nothing left to sell. I think we need to pack the kids. Yeah. Send them away that all of this has been for nothing. If we can't stay together, that means we lost. That means we're giving up! One fight only. It's not a comeback. Looks like they dug old Jim Braddock out of retirement. <laughs> Where the hell did that come from? When again, and then things maybe start getting serious. What are you doing? You beat this guy easy last time. Yeah, the same guy. All sorts of letters from people saying you're their inspiration. Like you saved their lives or something. You're gonna be the next champ, Jimmy! Are you scared for your husband's life? Max Baz killed two men in the ring. It's no joke, pal. People die in fairy tales all the time. What's worth it, Jimmy? What's worth it? Leave. I got some kind of say over our lives. And when things are bad, we can do something about it. Make things better for our family. I came to pray for Jim. So did they. They all think that Jim's fighting for them. This fight's as good as murder. First punch he lands, you'll sleep forever. You gotta beat this! You gotta beat this from the inside out! From the inside out! You, you can, can do, do it, it to me! me! Cinderella Man. See, God used a bear, <laughs> Max, to help James uh, Braddock be the best that he could be. God used a giant called Goliath to excel David's popularity. Whatever is coming against you, a bear, a giant, an addiction, a coworker that's talking behind your back, a looming bill, whatever has got you afraid or discouraged, I'm telling you today to stay the course, keep going, because God is gonna use those things to excel your faith, excel your position at work, excel your standing in the community if you just don't give up. Now, after Goliath, David's testing wasn't over. Then he had to run from King Saul because Saul was jealous of his popularity. And for more than two years, it says he ran. Maybe you've been fighting something for years, and we need to learn from David's life to not give up because the blessing is coming. The victory is on its way. Let me tell you about a guy named Bill. He said, I had a comfortable life, and in a span of a few weeks, it was all stripped away. My marriage dissolved, my children rebelled, my health spiraled downward, my family fell apart, my dreams were shattered. And yet, in the midst of all those painful events, I somehow experienced God's richest blessing, a stronger faith than I had experienced before, a deeper love than I had ever known before, a more intimate walk than I could explain. See, my trials grounded my faith in ways that uh, that prosperity and abundance never could. While my trials were not blessings in themselves, they were channels for them. And I clung to the lyrics of a song during that time that said this, what if your blessings come through raindrops? What if trials of this life are like rainstorms and, and hard things and blessings in disguise? One minute life is good and the next we can be in a battle for our lives. But don't lose sight and give up because God is going to take those negative things and turn them around and beauty will come out of ashes. If we just stay the course, stay in the ring, keep fighting. See, the third thing to do to have a blessed heart is don't retaliate. 
I mean, David was a pro at this. He, he knew what it meant to be attacked emotionally, verbally, and even physically. He spent two years running from his predecessor who wanted to kill him. He hid in caves while being criticized consistently behind his back. David never said a bad word against Saul. Can you imagine that? I mean, he never retaliated because God was preparing him to be the king after God's own heart. There was one time when David could have easily taken Saul's life and got back at him for all the hell that he took him through, but he didn't. He chose not to. See, that tells us that we have to make choices not to retaliate, not to speak against our enemies, not to try to get them back. Why? Because if we refrain from doing what our flesh wants to do, you know, instead do it, God, do it God's way, then this is what can happen. In Psalms 23, 5, it says, David is actually writing this. He says, you serve me, God, a six-course dinner right in front of my enemies. You revive my drooping head. My cup brims with blessing. Notice when God brings you through the opposition, he's not going to do it in private. He's going to do it where all your enemies can see it. See, when we retaliate, it's but a moment in time. But God says, if you see your enemy as something I can use to make you better and don't give in to your impulses, I will give you something to remember, not in private, but in public. See, we can see this also with Jesus and Judas. In, in one sense, God used Judas more than he used the other disciples. Now, I, that might be confusing to you, but let me explain. See, God allowed Judas to betray Jesus for a greater purpose, and at the time it seemed like a bad break for Jesus, but if Judas had not betrayed Jesus, there wouldn't have been a crucifixion. Without the cross, there wouldn't have been a resurrection. And without the resurrection, we wouldn't have redemption, no salvation. See, the question is, could have God done it a different way with Judas and Jesus? Yeah, he could have, but he didn't. He shows us how he can use even our enemies to bless us. See, when you grab a hose and put your finger over it, over the spout, you're resisting the water flow, but it's that resistance that propels the water stream further than it can go by itself. The same is true when we face an enemy. God uses that resistance to excel our faith, our performance, our purpose, than without it. In fact, let me give you a good illustration of this. A long time ago, the Chinese emperor of China wanted to eradicate Christianity from his empire. So he took all their land and holdings and separated them all over the empire. His plan was that this would keep them from gathering and growing. Well, the problem is he didn't understand the method of evangelism. Jesus said, go into all the world and tell them about me. See, Christianity not only grew faster there than ever before, but people estimate today that China has now over 100 million Christians. See, even though your enemy wants to squeeze the life out of you, or like David, God will prepare you for your throne, or like James Broddick in, in Cinderella Man, you will excel to become the champion that God wants you to be. Or like Jesus, what your enemy meant for harm, God will use to bless you. Not only bless you, a lot of other people as well. So check, let's check our heart for a second, right? See, to make sure that we're not complaining about our enemy, that we're not going to give up, that, that we don't give in to the impulses and retaliate. If you'll do this, I believe that God will not only bless your life, but will give you a blessed heart. Let's pray. Father, thank you, Lord, for helping us understand a really important principle about our enemies and how you can use that and leverage that in our life to really catapult us into new levels of experiential life, to really understand what it means to follow Jesus. We thank you for that and help us to accomplish those things this week. In Christ's name we pray, amen. Thank you so much for being with us, and I hope to see you either next week, either online or on campus. Bye.